Okay, so let's open the meeting. This is the September 13th, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting. Late cam is taping. Uh, are you recording the meeting? No one is recording the meeting. Our first order of business is just to discuss scheduling the special town meeting for November 13th, 2017. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Yep. All right, so Rita, you checked with the school. That's good with them. It's yes. good with town council. Yes. Mark Rich will actually be attending and not Greg Corbo. Okay. And the moderator. Oh, yeah, Norm. You checked with Norm, too? Excellent. All right, so that is, uh, that is it. That is the date. I suppose we need to vote that, right? Yes. So I will move that we <coughs> schedule a special town meeting at 7 p.m. at the Aponiquet High School Auditorium on Monday, November 13th, 2017, and to open the warrant. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I also move to close the warrant on Tuesday, September 21, <coughs> 2017, at 5 p.m. And I assumed the Slotman would want to keep it open for a week. That's what I moved. Yep. Okay. You know, Sometimes you open and close it the same day if you don't want anything else on a warrant, but typically no, that's you do it a week. When do we have to... Uh, is transferring the free cash and paying down debt or transferring money to pay down debt, that's a warrant article, and that has to be done by September... No. 21 or no? No, no. Oh. Well, we, I'll we stop. can do that right up to the meeting. Well, I gave you sort of a list of some mm. of the things I thought right. the board would want on that. And I'll start working on the warrant articles. Right. Okay. So let, let's just vote okay. to close it. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? We need Aye. Second it. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so yeah, I mean, we can go through this list. So the proposed warrant articles are the acceptance of Cedar Pond Road, <coughs> etc. Um, the rezoning of Staple Shore, Staple Shore Road from business to residential. There are zoning amendments for accessory structures and some other uh, zoning things that Zoning Bylaw Review Committee are doing. Um, there's the possible ratification of union contracts, transfer um, unpaid FY17 bills, transfer of free cash to pay down debt, rescind general bylaw for capital expenditures committee um what's this last one uh the town clerk and the town to sneak this one on had asked to accept the, this at the annual and um lillian was just certified uh so she would like um this to go on the a special it was taken off the annual remember mitzi yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, so I put question marks now? after these two. I'm not okay. sure how you feel about, we've talked about uh, rescinding capital expenditure committee, that it's an extra committee, but I don't know if you want to do that at this meeting. I don't want to. We can just not utilize it. Right, I think that's yeah, where I don't we were. Think we just that, leave it the way it is. That right. we appointed because less than a quorum. While we don't necessarily utilize it, future boards may want that ability <coughs> so i don't i mean we just don't need to use it because what I, I think there is a quorum appointed john just by virtue of the way the bylaw that's fine and they okay. can meet and render a decision and we can listen to it i mean it's okay I mean, so businesses yeah i mean that's okay. my opinion what do you guys think oh i agree i thought we actually had Pointed it so that they wouldn't have a quorum, but it doesn't make any difference. I, I, I agree with you. I don't want to rescind it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm on board with that. All right. Um, the only other thing might be uh, under our agenda item number five tonight. If um, we end up having that article for transfer funds for Winterfest, but that might just be transfer of free cash for everything. Yeah, it could be on that. Right. You know, yeah. right. Yeah, it could right. be and on Article sure One with all the there. transfers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, great. So that's that's the date then is November 13th, um, 
So good people of Cedar Pond neighborhood, please go to your town meeting or you will be paying to plow your road for another winter. That should get them there. <clears throat> Our second agenda item is to uh, discuss the school resource resource officer agreement extension. So we received an intermunicipal extension agreement from the regional school committee that they voted on um, to extend the resource officer through June 30th, 2018. And do we have to vote on it or we've already done all that? You vote on the extension. Oh, all right. And Bob Clark signed under the selection, so no, we have to. No, but there wasn't enough name, space, that's all. Yeah, I'm in favor of this. No changes to the it's last amount. Did we review the last contract to make sure there was nothing that would, like, conflict with a date change on it? Just to make sure that there was nothing that was specific to last year or that there was nothing that, you know, if there's an arrangement for fees, if it's not commensurate with a raise or anything well, I, like I that, I just don't, the chief. I don't have it. So. I met with the police chief. We went through last year. It was just the one-page extension, but we did look at the contract itself, right? Because I right. remember seeing the whole thing. Because I just want to make sure that there's nothing that would be so, uh, you know, not in concert with just extending it for a year. Something that we might not think of before. Well, my question was the dollar amount, the thirty thousand five hundred, because wages change for the officer. But the chief said he was fine with what he was getting. You're not comfortable with the school committee went through that due diligence process? Not at process? all, no. I would actually like to see <laughs> that. And I think that's what happened last year is we had this. I said, I think we all said no because we wanted to review the agreement. And then we came back to it and we said yes. And I, I, I think it was two years ago because was we it? didn't, it was two years ago that Aaron had asked what is different and there were changes between the two. Okay. Right. And then but I, we can put this yeah, on I the 27. I just want to see it. And yeah. have a no, chance to fair. go through it. Just there in was case a point in it. time where I actually thought the same thing and cared, but I guess it's not tonight. <laughs> but you're saying that's why we you're saying Rita, the extensions. contract did not change. It did not change. Okay. This is the second year that we've just done okay. this extension. Yeah, I just yeah. want to read the yes. contract because no. maybe there was something that I know Frank looked it over, but just from a okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. So we'll table that till our ne till our next meeting. Agenda item number four. We have a proposal to be ratified uh, regarding our contract negotiations with the laborers union. So the proposal was submitted to us for our review. Does anybody have any questions about the terms of it? I know that we've discussed this prior to tonight in executive session. No. Put anything and, right. and I Put did it. ask uh, Labor Council, should we do a memorandum of agreement like we did? Uh, and he said no, it would just be they voted unanimously uh, to accept this basis for proposal, and right. we'll just move forward, make the changes to the contract, and then have them sign it, and the selectmen can vote to sign it at a later date. But yep. Bert suggested that you just do vote um, that this is. Uh, these are the terms of the new contract. Okay. Did, did you you have any questions, John? No, I, I was just a little confused. We don't need a memorandum right. of agreement. It's fine by me. I don't even see the purpose behind the thing. But uh, so we don't need one. That's fine by me. Okay. I, I'm I'm fine with the uh, as presented. Okay. Mitzi, did you have anything? Nothing. Yeah. Okay. So I will move that we vote to ratify the proposal and submit that vote uh, to the interested parties for the sake of uh, moving this forward. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries, it's unanimous. We received a request from the Community Development Committee 
For fireworks. <laughs> the Community Development Committee voted at their meeting held on September 6, 2017, to forward a letter to the Board of Selectmen requesting $5,000 for the sake of funding the 2018 Winterfest fireworks, which are scheduled for January 28, 2018. They're asking for uh, this appropriation as it took three years of fundraising efforts to raise enough money for the previous display, which everybody uh, thought was great. It was very well received by everyone that attended, so claims the letter. <laughs> I enjoyed them, personally. Um, so, we, we just touched on this rega in regard to the, the town meeting. Do we want to add this as a, as a line item for funds to be transferred to the um, Community Development Committee for the sake of fireworks. I mean, I know you're for it. Yeah. Well, yes. no, I, this I is am. additional explanatory language, too. Um, we have about $2,000 going into this year yep. that's left over in the account. The intention is not that we need this every year. It's really just we need to have kind of something to kind seed of money? bolster. Yes, maybe some seed money. Um, if our fundraising efforts fall short, and if not, then we have this article that we right. kind of can keep in perpetuity for the money that we're looking for. Do we have a backup date for bad weather? The fireworks always have a backup date. So for the fireworks, they give us, um, it's either like the next date or the next right. weekend. Okay. So that's kind of built into the contract that if it's right. poor weather, they will come down to another day. Fine. Nope. Fine by me. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, I don't know as if we necessarily need to vote on this specifically today, but if we agree to add it to that transfer, then then when we vote that, we'll, that'll be part of it. Yep. So, right. Thank you. Here we go. Vote to approve and adopt the layouts for Cedar Pond Road, Kui Kui Can, Kui Kui Chan <laughs> Circle, and Ron Circle. Such a, such a wonderful, uh, wonderfully creative name, Ron Circle. Um, so, here is the layout procedure. This is a public meeting for the layout of these roads. We are going to vote to um, decide whether we approve and adopt the layouts as shown on the as-built plan, and then it will go before the town meeting for acceptance. The planning board voted on September 7th to recommend approval subject to the completion of the items listed in the Superintendent of Streets letter dated July 26, 2017. We decide to, move, uh, to approve the adopted layouts Here's the following motion. Um, all right, so we've read this stuff. Does anybody have any questions about any of this? No, just on the punch, not on this procedure, but on Jeremy's punch list, I don't want it to go to the last second and find out it's not been done. So who's making sure that his punch list is complete? He wrote it to Brian. And if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, Jeremy did meet with the planning board. <coughs> he had a question under number two about the chain link fence, uh, and the planning board voted not to put up that chain link fence. They did not feel it was required. But they have done some of the work, and um, the Homeowners Association uh, has been in close contact with Jeremy, and as things are getting done, Jeremy goes out and inspects it. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, to John's point, we obviously we want to make sure that this stuff is all done because once we take ownership, it's our responsibility to maintain it. So it should be up to the standards of our superintendent of streets prior to, to the vote. And I think that, you know, we can we can just talk to Jeremy prior mm -hmm. to, and if he has issues with it, we can, we can uh, 
hopefully have them resolved prior to the town meeting. But if for some reason, I, I don't imagine this will happen, but if for some reason they don't do anything, then we can have that conversation at town meeting with the idea of tabling, mm -hmm. uh, tabling it. In the planning board's vote, they also said it was subject to the superintendent's uh, final inspection and signing yep. off. It was done prior to the uh, special town meeting. Yep. That was their stipulation. Okay. Um, all right, does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve and adopt the layouts for seat upon. Wickersham Circle and Ron Circle. Um, I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. All right. So the rest of this stuff happens uh, kind of in the background, but yeah. there's a procedure is listed. In case you wanted to know what it was, I yep. put it on there. Oops. Interesting. Somewhat. Agenda item number seven is a request for a storage trailer permit at 19 South Kingman Street. So we've received the renewal for the trailer permit of Salvatore. Cucinati. Help me out, Rita, with this Cucinati. one. Cucinati. 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 Um, he submitted a letter from his neighbor, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. Mr. Cucinati has applied for a storage trailer permit at 19 South Kingman Street. He submitted a letter from his neighbor at 17 King South Kingman Street stating that he's okay with the current location of the trailer. Our building commissioner has been out to the site and we received a memo from him. So the neighbor is okay with it. I'm assuming that's the neighbor most affected by the placement of it, probably based on the sight line. Um, the previous neighbor was not, so that's why he yep. produced that letter. So then there's a drawing here of, of where it is in an explanation. Um, <clears throat> the current storage box appears to meet the minimum required 20 foot sideline setback. And it is and more than adequate front setback. So he's okay with that. Um, he does make a point though about the temporary nature. And is this really a temporary storage when it's been there for years? Um, and that these do not fit into the character of a residential neighborhood and provisions should be made by the owner to provide a more appropriate permanent storage solution. So that's kind of a conversation, I think, for another night, although I think that's something that maybe a zoning bylaw review committee could tackle. Um, you know, Nate's on the front line of, of enforcing this type of stuff. He knows better than anybody um, where these issues are and how it affects different neighborhoods and I think he's in a unique position to provide us uh, with insight into what would work and what wouldn't in terms of making suggestions for this I mean under the current bylaw anyone can go out and get one of these things and put it in their yard and if they get caught they have to come if they didn't pull a permit for it, they can come and get one but there's no control over it as um, at all so I don't necessarily have an opinion on it either way at this point in time but I think that that's part of a larger conversation that maybe we'll have and bring back to this board in the future um, so with that said I move that we approve the storage trailer permit at 19 South Kingman Street uh, as applied for to see how long is it good for a year. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number eight. Review and vote 
Oh wait, we're not doing this one. We're gonna table this one because there's more work to be done. Agenda item number nine. Columbia Gas is at it again. They want to open the road at 1 Southworth Street for a new gas service. Did you guys get the bond? I received the bond on Monday, so we're all set. All right. So this is the... Um, this is a request for a gas service installation at 1 Southworth Street. There's the, the map and then the letter from uh, Jeremy Peck, our highway, or, or should say superintendent of streets, uh, explaining the process of, or I should say the requisite re um, requirements that he likes to see when this is done. So it looks like that this request is in order Anybody have any questions or no? Other than this is a pretty big deal because it comes across. Um, Route seventy nine. So, yep, it, it's fine. But uh, oh yeah, it's right at the This is this is this is one that uh, needs to be most assuredly done correct. Right. It's not some little side street. And. Not that we're on the docket for doing Route 79 till 2020 plus, but as that comes down, we'll probably want to send a notice to all the people. If you're thinking of hooking up the gas, you better get going. Really, 79 will, because 79 will not be disturbed. Right. They, they'll be what five years or something before right. you can right. even consider right. something. So, like that, so. I, I have no problems with it. Just uh, Route 79. If I may, too, I know John Chase, before he left the Water Department, had asked Jeremy, uh, everyone on 79 should be re reminded, if they want to tie into city water, right. there will be a five-year yeah, moratorium. Both. both. Right. I think Jeremy might have done a mailing. We probably that would be something worth following we, up yeah, on. Yeah, we probably do, do the dual mailing for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it would be good if we also know or we have any movement on that whole project because we have to have another public hearing right maybe we could yeah. do that in advance and then send it with that mailing right. that's announcing the public yeah. hearing i have see, no idea we were right. in the process see, the, tri be years the, out. the tricky part is is on johnson drive did you have gas or no? uh no but you could hook up right right so it isn't just the people on 79 that is it's the first house on it, each it, street it's yeah, the whole roughly, coming yeah. across route 79 going into a major mm -hmm. development right that if we're going to do a mailing we'd want to do it to those side roads off of 79 yeah. okay to good people of the route 79 area if you're watching and you want water from Taunton or Columbia Gas to provide gas service to your house, please do it now. Mr. Chair, Jeremy does keep Columbia Gas in the loop on his roads that he's going to be paving. Yep. Um, that's why all those Kenneth Welch ones came up, because they moved to get those hooked up. Right, so right, right prior. Right, yep, definitely. Um, we didn't vote on that, did we? All right, yeah, so... I move that we accept the application as written. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Subject to Jeremy's. Um, yes. Con uh, conditions. That's the word. Conditioned. As conditioned by our superintendent mm -hmm. of streets. That's my motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Any further corrections to my sloppy motioning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Admittedly sloppy motioning. All those in favor? Aye. Aye? Aye. Let's discuss the future IT needs of the town, including the idea of a new telephone system, 2019, and an update to the town website. We are building a new police station part of that process is to ideally move the
physical housing of the IT infrastructure for the town to that facility, which is a 247 facility that is specifically designed for climate control and, and um, with, you know, power backup and all that good stuff for the sake of, of the, the police. Now, of course, we've talked about how we would ideally like to have all of the town's mainframe, you can call it a mainframe anymore. <laughs> I'm too young to be calling it a mainframe. That wasn't really my era, but um, you get my point. So the, the IT infrastructure is here. We want to put it there. Um, to do that, it it, uh, it really takes us, and, and we're in the process of, if not already doing it, is, is working with an IT professional to provide the needs of that space to the architect for the police mm -hmm. station so that we have a room that is that satisfies that needs in terms not just in terms of size but mm -hmm. in terms of climate control and electrical power and, and conduits and all of that to get the inf you know the, the information out um, it also requires TMLP to be involved for the sake of hooking up them up over there which isn't as big a deal as we thought initially. right it's right out on the street right so um, This really brings about, so that's one piece of this, is, is that, and I think to a certain extent, we've got the correct professional providing services to us to satisfy that need, and the design of, of the need, uh, the space and, and all that good stuff. The next piece is, is the telephone system. We, we obviously are going to have a new telephone system for the police station, um, but this is really a good time to explore the idea of a new telephone system for the town hall as well. Um, I, I suppose it's, uh, to, to categorize it as a terrible phone system would, would probably be accurate, I guess, based on the reports I've heard from not just Rita, but different department heads in terms of, um, it's just not, not that easy for them to use it or get it to do what they want it to do. So. I guess this is just really opening up the conversation. We're not talking about this for the sake of really making any decisions tonight, but I think we just, or I want to know, um, in terms of planning, what your thoughts are on those issues. So I would say, I mean, we have an IT plan, the master plan that was put together, the strategic plan. Right. I'm happy to kind of sit down and go through that in conjunction with John Barker to see what we should prioritize this year. The first thing I think we need to do, though, is to really make sure that we're moving forward on the grant for permitting because we have $40,000 that we could easily lose and we're already in September and there's only, you know, nine months left in this year and I don't want to lose that. I don't, so I don't want to lose sight of that. Um, with regard to the telephone system, you know, I'm happy to discuss that. I don't think it was in the IT plan at all. No, I think he does have. Was it in we there talked too? about. Should, okay. should we and have him in? I would think so. Uh, I would think we need to have him in to say and, what's uh, what's the next well, quarter's action plan. Right, because it actually we had an action plan in that IT. Yep. The strategic plan has quarter by quarter and right. what we're supposed to be doing. So. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we re get the action plan, review it, and discuss. Yeah. Where, what's been implemented mm -hmm. without John? Yeah. Like we, yeah. I think we. Yeah. You're totally right. I mean, I bring this up and we're talking yeah. about it. And then of course, Mitzi, who has a much better memory than I do, um, points out uh, quite embarrassingly that we've done a lot of this stuff already, and that we <laughs> we really just need to review our existing plan um, and see what has been implemented, what hasn't been implemented, and and then I think we can have that conversation with John to say, all right, here's where we're at, here's where we, where we hope to be, either a good job for getting us there or why aren't you, why haven't you done it? Yep. Right. Um, but if we don't, we don't understand what that is, this, yeah. this conversation really can't happen, so. Yeah. Is the phone system and 9-11 in the $800,000, $8 million <laughs> police station Capital plan. Um, 
There is money allotted for that. Okay. I think in the soft cost. Okay. For I don't the think for the whole town and costs have come. No, no, the town, the towns, yeah. the town separate has to put it in their own numbers. And do we have any numbers on that? The last company I met with, um, I think it was Earth Tech. The Department of Defense uses them. We're talking numbers of about a hundred thousand dollars, but then there's ways that. Um, you can lease the equipment instead, uh, get rid of all the copper wire. But I know cost. It's probably two years since I met with them. I've met with three or four vendors over the years, but the cost was always out of sight. And um, right. so maybe now would be a good time to look at it again. I know it's you know. We can give them all new iPhones, a thousand dollars each, and just have them dial them direct. The website cost. Now, uh, we've met with Civic Plus. I'm waiting for the quote on that. And we're meeting with Virtual Town Hall on the 20th uh, to get some quotes. But we definitely want a more interactive uh, website, um, have each department head keep them up to date, get our new form, our permitting, and all of that. So I should have a, a quote, hopefully, for your next meeting, an idea of. Is John Barker the? Working on was he the one to implement the permitting grant? No, no, it was in the strategic plan. So we need to make sure that mm -hmm. that gets done. I think that was done between Nate and Jeremy, if through I'm not mistaken. Through PGIS, through PGIS. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay, sure. So I I, it would be now. good to get an update on that. And I think that we should probably have regular updates on that to make sure we're not missing any deadlines. So I don't think we've done anything on it, but I could be. Yeah, totally I think he's wrong, finishing so. up the GIS. Uh, the mapping part, the first part, yeah, before we get to the permitting yeah. part. Okay. And how many grants do we have, Mitzi? Was it two? Well, just or that IT one, but then we have an HR grant okay. that is for ten thousand dollars. Twenty. Okay. Twenty. And we had our oh. first meeting yesterday. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So the IT part is forty thousand dollars. Right. And we estimated in the strategic plan for IT that that permitting software with all of the kind of first year costs would be seventy-five thousand dollars. That's what I submitted for the grant application. I think I actually submitted 90 or something like that. Um, something larger than what it really was. But that also included some things that I don't think were exactly necessary uh, okay. on that. It had multiple pieces associated with it. So I th You got 40, and I think our quote was 50. So we, we transferred the 10, 10 at, at, at Capitol. Town, yeah, for town meetings. So. And then we have the whole uh, strategic plan that I had given to the state. Yeah. Last year. Yep. Uh, that deadline isn't as bad, and the deadline for HR is June 30th, 2019. Okay. But we did get going on it yesterday with our first meeting on. I think that the the IT grants they said they were coming, or the opening for the IT grant would be coming out. Oh, that was in our last meeting. It was in one of the read items. Two, um, two meetings ago, and I gave that to Lorraine to. Okay, great. To make follow. sure that we don't miss that, because we can talk about that too when we talk about the IT. Plan. What do we want to do secondly after that cricket stops chirping in the I hallway? Well, I think we were going to call um, Charlie Lincoln from on the regionalization part. I think that's what monies are available right now. Oh, okay, so just yeah, yeah. I think that grant's yeah. open, right? Yeah. So maybe as, as Aaron had suggested, maybe the next agenda will review John Baca's. Well, I'll status. forward it to everybody okay. sooner than okay. later. Yeah. Yeah, we can just revisit it at the next meeting. Yeah. All right. Okay. There's a lot of noise going on here between. <laughs> I'm not sure what's the crickets. Crickets got to live somewhere. <laughs> Town hall's okay. I have a lot in my house. They get in my basement. Oh, I can't stand them. I hunt them down. And I kill them. That's per <laughs> Sandy Horton. That is bad luck. So ever since oh, you told me that, so I can't kill him. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's talk about scheduling some meetings. We have meetings. September is scheduled, but we are we have some proposed dates for the ele uh, October, November, December. That's October 11th and 25th, November 8th and 29th, and December 6th and. 
fall Wednesdays and tentatively 6.30ish, or do they move out mid No, like I mean, just that one okay. date that no, I had no, that, that conflict. But that's fine, whatever suits I your schedule. can't do October 25th. So I don't know if you'd rather throw that in on, like, November 1st, and then we'd have November 1st, 15th, and 29th. So there'd be three in November, but they're two weeks apart each. That would be okay, I think. You mean November 13th? Wait. I thought, uh, November 8th would be warrant review before town meeting. Oh, right. I forgot we have that. When? What day do, are we doing the... Oh, Jesus. That's Hang on. November 13th. In October. Somebody killed a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. They'll fall down the stairs because they will have bad luck. We'll hear that. Whoops. All right, so that's a town meeting on November 13th at 7 p.m. So you, you were saying, uh, sorry, I'm with you now. What's up? Well, I, I Maybe just... do November 1st and we can do warrant review and skip the 8th. Yeah, I just can't meet on the you 25th of can't October. Do... The right. 11th is fine. All the other dates are fine. So kill the 25th, but then when do we want to meet? If you're going to do warrant first. review on the 8th, you probably need another meeting. Well, I was so just thinking if we did the 1st and the 8th, do you want to have two in a row? That's okay. Okay. Yeah, so November 1st. End of the 8th and the 29th? Yeah. 6.30? December. Destroying this calendar here. Six in the twentieth. Yep. All right. All right, yeah, that works for me. We have new business. I do. I didn't think we would have the ban in time, the bond anticipation note in time for tonight's meeting uh, because the bid was held yesterday. Univank held the, uh, I mean, our, our um, financial advisor uh, did the bid yesterday and the for the three-month ban that the selectmen wanted to do, the rate um, for a shorter term did go up 1.3 percent. And because it... Um, do you have another one for Mr. Potter? Because I, I, I do. left one on your desk. Um, okay. Thank you. And we're at matures on matures on uh, November September nineteenth. So you're not meeting again until the twenty seventh. So I how is this different from what we already did? It's only three months. At the, your last meeting, you authorized uh, Deb Kenny to only do a three month ban instead of a one, uh, twelve month. So this is the actual. Is yeah, that, no. Because at our November 13th town meeting, we probably want to pay down, or authorize to pay down some of these. That's why we're doing a short term ban. Right, right. No, I understand. Yeah. Oh, so this is just to this vote. This is the actual note. I this see. All right. No. So this, is, sorry, this is the note. I'm yeah. sorry. I misheard you then. I think. Um, okay. So in regard to this, there's a. There's three capital items that we approved at the town meeting on June 6, 2016. <clears throat> um, the new pumper truck with equipment for the fire department, the new backhoe with equipment for the highway department, and the design for the new police station, totaling $920,000. Um, that's what we're trying to do here with this. So the motion is to approve and sign the bond anticipation note ban in the amount of $920,000 for various purposes to be issued on September 19th and due December 19th, uh, 2017, payable to Unibank for savings with an interest rate of 1.30%. I'll second that. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. And then the other new business was, I think Tracy had talked to you about the annual ride, uh, Rodman ride for kids. Thank you. It turns out that they are going to be crossing over Route 44 in Lakeville and on some of the town roads, you said, Tracy? Uh, they're going like to be crossing 44, and then they're going to be using, they're going to be on a couple of the other ones. Um, it's like Holland Street and Marion Road and the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank is okay with it? And he doesn't know about it. I, I just got this last night after I left for the evening, and um, the reason that they even sent it to us was because DOT told them, you have to get a permit from Lakeville to go on 44. If that hadn't happened, they wouldn't have asked permission at all, because they don't ask permission for the towns to use their roads. So we've done other Rodman Ride for Kids, though. And the last time they asked for permission was 2008. Cool. They have not asked for permission since then. So have they reached out to Frank? Because they need a police detail, they say, on their own you know, sheet. Because they're crossing Route 44 at Kelly Tired of Richmond Street, which is like, ridiculous. <laughs> That's like I one would, of the dumbest things you could do. I would assume that they have a police detail. <laughs> I mean, Other like than suicide. ride the bikes backwards, which would be <laughs> even more ridiculous. It's like one of the worst intersections. Right. It's not, it's, this is the one that goes on Long Point Road. So I. It's. Is, yeah, is it's there another one Lakeville. that does Long Point Road? No, this is right onto Long Point Road. Right. I don't um, know if you're so thinking of um, the other one, the Pan Mass Challenge, that goes through every year, and that happened just a couple weeks ago with the water. We have to put notices and, and yeah, right, everybody's and mailbox. Yeah. So this should be subject to the police. Chief. They're going to have a water stop at Pontiquet. Prove that with anyone? I mean, Frank would need to look at this right away. Is it on the 23rd? <coughs> Third? Well, we go approving it. And unfortunately, the ride is on the 27th, I believe. No, 23rd. 23rd. The 23rd. Okay, so. Yeah, we don't even meet before that right. again. When I talked to Amy today, I reminded her that back in 2008 we had this conversation that, you know, they needed to get us these things at least 30 days in advance. And um, they haven't asked permission since then, so I assume right. they've been doing it. Right, so why do they care now? Because DOT got them, because they didn't have a permit to be on Route 44. Right. They're, they're turning on to Route 79 uh, off of Kingman Street and stuff like that. I mean, they're at busy, busy, busy places. This well, says, too, I mean, they need signature of the local police department, right. fire department, right. board of right. selectmen, and the state police. Well, let's refer to Frank and get his uh, feedback on it, and, and Danny, too. And then uh, if they're for it, maybe we can try to set up a meeting where we just, even if it's just John and I, assuming that Frank and Danny are okay with it, yeah. you'd vote yes, right? Probably, but I can probably, are you talking about like a meeting during the day? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're not around, John yeah. and I can get yeah. together and just yeah, that's fine. put this through. I mean, I, I don't feel comfortable proceeding without <laughs> the opinions on this because they're the ones that know the roads and the safety elements <coughs> right. yes, exactly. relative to how this would impact traffic and all that good stuff. And, and well, I did tell her I wasn't guaranteeing that this was going to happen tonight. Yeah. So. Well, if, if she calls or you talk to her tomorrow or whenever, um, just say that, you know, we're open to the idea of doing our best to make this work, but we're going to make sure that we get the proper information and make the best decision. <coughs> we're going to try to coordinate that with uh, 
our police and fire chiefs <coughs> to, to do that. And, and, then, and they're really quick about these, so they'll probably give me an answer tomorrow. Sure, sure, right. Um, I just, I personally don't feel comfortable making a decision on it without getting their feedback, so. Okay. We will wait to, to get that, and then we will do our best to accommodate the request. Thankless job of the public servant. Um, but okay, is there any other <laughs> any other uh, new business? No, I was just going to give an update about the meeting with the community contact yesterday. Oh, great! So that was um, that has started. Did you go with Jim Kenny? That was no, a different meeting. No, that That's was a different the meeting. Energy, right. Okay. Where was your meeting? They came to us. Okay. Um, you and we Lorraine contracted Lorraine. and uh, Lorraine. Okay. Um, the uh, what's the I can't remember the name where they're from. Uh, the business center that the state has contracted with. Um, How did you ask? Do you remember Boston? the name? Know. So the update is you don't know? I forget where they're from. The Give state the contract is, uh, no, they've, I gave them all of our uh, personnel policies. Uh, they're working on a hiring policy for Great. us, for all the different groups. Um, they're going to, Collins Center, Ed Collins through, um, University at UMass Boston. And actually, Greg Corbo's wife, Libby Corbo, that used to work for Copeland and Page, uh, she's a labor attorney. Uh, she was in on the meeting too, so okay. um, it's probably a two or three hour meeting. So they're going to follow up on some items, uh, look at our payroll system. Uh, we're trying to go paperless, and uh, we'll meet in a, a few more weeks. Well, they're going to develop a scope of services of just what they're going to do for us. Okay. Great. Thanks, Rita. Do we have any old business? Any other business? Oh, on the read. Oh. Under the other items, just to make a note, um, that will, our town clerk, William Drain, has qualified to be designated a certified Massachusetts municipal clerk. That took a lot of um, several years for her to accomplish that. Great. No, that is a great achievement. I think. Personally, I think Lillian does a great job as our town clerk. I, I, I admire her thoroughness to to handling that job. So, okay. Anything else? I guess we're going into executive session. That's true, right? Yes. Yes. Not tomorrow. Right. So. I move that we enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the fire union if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board and the chair so declares, and I do declare, and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A7 to comply with the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A Section 22F, approval of exec executive session minutes for August 21, 2017 and September 6, 2017, and not to come back into open session. Second. I'll second that. Sorry. 
tried to do a ventriloquist yep. thing. Didn't work. I just wait for John to say it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I was, day, <laughs> so I I was, no I was daydreaming. Say hi. Nope. It's fine. Um, all right, we have a motion and a second. By roll call, all those in favor? Probably aye. Burke aye. The ayes have it. 